Good morning. Good morning. Wow, I'm going to actually have to wear my sunglasses over there, I think. Uh, it's good to be here, and it's glad that the sun is out, actually. A little bit windy this morning, but I don't have any hair, so it doesn't affect me as badly as all the women here. Uh, I'm glad you could be with us. I think it's Sunday now. Uh, I think we're done with all the service in the middle of the week, but not on the weekend occasionally. And so a new year, uh, 2020. So you should be able to see things much clearer this year. Yeah, I made that joke. <laughs> As did every other lame person in America this past season. So, um, There is going to be a uh, council meeting, short, short council meeting, I'm told. So I'm, they'll hold you to that, David. Uh, right after service. So council members, new and old, make sure you uh, stick around and gather probably in the office, I would assume so that you can get done quickly. Uh, new oncoming council members, let's see, two, I'm trying to think, oh, is Tim here? Goldhammer? Nope, so we got two out of you. Oh, he's, okay, there you are. Okay, you'll be installed later this service, so don't hide. You may or may not have known about that. It's in the, it's in the uh, service, so now you know. Don't go anywhere. And um, we have a, the annual congregational meeting is coming up in two weeks, so you've been officially notified, so we have fulfilled the requirements of the Constitution that way. But uh, I look forward to seeing that. That's the, probably the biggest thing of the year for me to observe this first year, so I'm curious to see how that all works out. And uh, hopefully many of you will be able to make it. Hopefully the weather will continue to be decent the rest of this month yet. And. Uh, uh, thank you to those who invited and helped us go along yesterday to um, Chad Wentland's uh, uh, what benefit uh, over in Corsica. That was really neat to see that. It's kind of, it, it's not the first time we've seen the community come together for a lot of different causes, and that was really neat to be a part of that, and I'm glad that uh, there were people thoughtful enough to reach out to us and make sure we were included in that. We don't, we're not always fully up to speed on, since we're dealing with about three or four different communities at least, and we touch probably five or six different communities, people coming from all over. Uh, I don't always know what's best to, to go to or when, and then the kids complicate things sometimes at this stage in life too. So we didn't stay there as long as would have been nice to, but it was good to see, and there was a great turnout, and, and uh, seems like a great guy, a great family, and so uh, continue to pray for him and, uh, and his struggle there with cancer. and, and uh, as, their, as the pastor that prayed yesterday said, continued hope and and uh, comfort and joy in their circumstances. So, and hopefully that'll minister to the people in the community as well as, as his family. Um, some other things I'll say when I'm for the message. I hope you've been able to uh, participate in the reading through the Bible in the year. If you still need a, a uh, uh, list of the readings to follow along for the, there, the sheet here. Um, there are some in the back there still, I believe. If not, I can print more, and then there's some in my office. Uh, seems to be going well so far. I've had several people bring it up and talk. If, if you've been able to do it, that's awesome. If you haven't quite started or you've had some struggle already, that's okay. Just jump to wherever you, you can on there or, or work through it. Um, at an added benefit, if you uh, don't do this, you, well, you could do it during the sermon if you wanted to, but you, I don't recommend it. But uh, Dwight and Carrie have, have used memorial money from Tyson's funeral to donate uh, Bibles for the church. So at the end of your pews, not only do you have the hymnals now, but you also have access to a Bible. So there's no excuse if I say, hey, look up this verse or something during the, the sermon. Or if you want to double check me and make sure I'm speaking from God's word, that's probably the better reason to open it up. Make sure I'm, you know, not to throw them at me if I'm not. Uh, but it's good that we got God's Word in the pew, and it matches what I'll usually use up here as well. And uh, so I'm, I'm thankful to see that. That's always great. And I know we print them, but there's just something about that. It's just not always the same reading it when it's printed, although it's still the Word of God, so it still has power. And so I encourage you to open that up when you get a chance, or if you come to church early and you haven't done your Bible reading for today or another day, you could read it while you're waiting for church to start, or you could read it after church. Um, but thankful, thankful for that, that uh, donation to the church. That will greatly benefit us. Any other announcements or things I missed at this time? The world's gotten a little crazy this past week, so we want to keep uh, Bud and Chris, who are, I think, are you still active, both of you? 
If, you know, so there's that unknown, like, okay, where's this going to go and what might happen kind of thing. So them and any other military personnel, we want to keep in our prayers that things stay uh, stable. With that, I invite you to please rise. Oh, is that the newsletter for January? Yes. Yes, yeah. I got confused by that because we had service on January 1st, too. And so, yeah, January's newsletter is, in, is at the back of the church as well. Make sure you get that so you know what's going on. All right, with that, now you may rise, please. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 119, beginning with verse 97. And we'll read this responsively together. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Let us continue in prayer. <coughs> Dear Father in heaven, we thank you as you shine your light of truth upon us this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence and to receive service from you this morning. Lord, minister to us through our minds and our hearts, through your music, through your word, and through the fellowship of one another. Help us to be strengthened and encouraged through knowing you and knowing one another. Help us in this journey alongside of one another through whatever the world brings our way and whatever Satan attacks with, whether, whether he causes us to miss church because of weather or whatever other circumstances come up in our lives. We pray, Lord, that you help to remove any barriers, provide us access to your word, and may we always have a song on our mouths, on our lips, and coming forth from our hearts of joy and thanksgiving for all that you've done for us. Bless us this morning through your service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. And since we missed the Sunday of Christmas season, I've taken liberty to put quite a few Christmas songs in our music this morning, including the communion songs. Our first one this morning is Angels from the Realms of Glory. <laughs>
please rise as you are able as we confess our sins before our Lord. Let us bow before the Lord and confess to him our sins. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. to you and to me the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ when I say Almighty God our Heavenly Father has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us. The promise of Scripture is that whoever confesses his sins to the Lord will receive forgiveness through the faithfulness and righteousness of Christ. God grant that this may be the experience of us all. On the other hand I declare to the impenitent and unbelieving that so long as they continue in their impenitence God has not forgiven their sins and will assuredly visit their iniquities upon them if they do not turn from their evil ways and come to true repentance and faith in Christ before the day of grace ends. A great comfort to those in Christ, but also a reminder of us that we need Christ to be able to come into his presence. Amen. We continue with our hymn. You may be seated. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
Our first reading this morning comes from 1 Kings 3, verses 4 through 15. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in upright of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this day. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of David my father, although I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitude. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this great, this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days." And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings and made a feast for all his servants. Second reading is from Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons with Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the purpose of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time and to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who, are, who were the first to hope in Christ might be to, praise, to the praise of his glory. In him, you, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promise, Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Please rise as you are able for the reading of our holy gospel this morning. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 40. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he, Jesus, was twelve years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they, re they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. 
And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and, Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Here ends the reading of our Holy Gospel. We continue our service with the confession of our Christian faith and the words of the Nicene Creed. Let us confess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. may be seated. I invite Nick and Tim and Corey to come forward. We get to install you. Hopefully I have the right tools. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen. You guys were voted in as uh, second elder vice president, right? Treasurer. Oh and third elder, and I'm learning what all these things are and all the responsibilities, but essentially you get to take care of the church and our people here, and so we're thankful for that. And so we begin here. Dear friends in Christ, you have been elected by this congregation to serve as officers in accordance with its constitution. Hear the word of God concerning the office to which you have been called, from Acts chapter 6. So the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples and said, it is not desirable desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Here also concerning the duties of the office to which you have been called. And these include your roles both as elders and as treasurer but essentially as stewards also of our church and people. It shall be your duty to assist the pastor and counsel him in all his work for the building up of the congregation, to help him in ministering to the sick as well as to the poor and distressed, and in the cultivation of peace, goodwill, and love among the members. You are also to assist him in making suitable provision for the instruction of the young, in the maintenance of church order, in the admonishing of the erring, and in the exercise of church discipline in accordance with your constitution and the word of God. In the absence of the pastor, or if the congregation should be without a pastor, you are to see that the worship series are held at the appointed times 
and are conducted properly in an order that the pure gospel be preached according to the faith of the church, the sacraments rightly administered, and that only those who are approved by the Constitution be allowed to preach. As trustees, you are to see that the property of the congregation is cared for and that all of its temporal affairs are properly administered. Together, you are to set a good example as servants of Christ and as officers in his congregation. The congregation here at St. Peter and the pastor need your leadership and prayer, encouragement, and service in order that the congregation may know that you are willing to take upon yourselves these duties, I ask you the following. Do you accept the offices and duties set before you, and do you promise to discharge these duties faithfully in the fear of God and in accordance with the Constitution, principles, and usages of our congregation? If so, please answer, yes, by the help of God. We continue, the triune God who has called you to the service of his congregation, enlighten and strengthen you in your office, that you may prove to be good and faithful stewards to the praise of his holy name. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have established within your congregation the ministry of the word and have supported that good work with a variety of spiritual gifts. We thank you that you have provided people of good reputation ready to serve this congregation for your sake. We humbly pray that you would bless them with the presence of your Holy Spirit, that they may have the wisdom and strength to complete the service to which they have been called. Let your blessing rest on this congregation, not only in its temporal affairs, but above all its ministry. Strengthen and increase the faith, love, and zeal of each member, that your name, God, may be glorified and that in every place the kingdom of our glorious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may grow. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Nick, Tim, Corey, God bless you guys in your service. Amen. We continue at this time with our offering. I invite the ushers to come forward. we thank you for your blessings upon us that allow us to come and freely give to you sacrificially perhaps also out of our abundance that you have blessed us with may you mount bountifully increase the results of these gifts that they might produce good works within and without our church and the greater community that they may be a blessing that they might make your name be known far and wide and that they may always be used to give glory to you and to not tarnish your image or make you or your people look bad. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless us and our community in ways beyond financial means, but also 
spiritually and emotionally and physically. Through, these, through this past year that had been rough, Lord, we look forward now to a new year. Help us to lean up furthermore on you for, your, for our strength, for our hope and our faith through this coming year of unknowns and whatever may lay before us. We think of the weather, yes, but we think also of the politics of this year, Lord, this election year, and the unknown and the anxiety that that may produce, the way it may impact us financially and other ways. Lord, we think also of the political situation and turmoil in the world and the uncertainty of war or not war, or struggles and, and terrorism and attacks of political states, but also just random people, Lord. We ask for your protection, protect our people, protect our communities, keep us safe from things that we are not even aware of going on around us, keep us safe from evil intent, keep us safe from evil actions. Help prepare us for times when we may need to act. Lord, we ask that you be, especially with our families who are directly affected by military actions and may be called up to service, Lord, we ask that you give them peace and, and hope that things will not come to that. Give them stability in their families, help their families to have faith and confidence in you to protect them and to keep them safe and together. Help them not to be separated not just in our church, but also all those around us in our community. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling with health, and especially those as we get older and things begin to fail, but also those with cancers and, and other diseases that just break down our bodies quicker and in unexpected ways, especially when we're far younger than we should be. We think of the Wentland family, Lord, we ask that you be with them, encourage them through the outpouring of the in response to the community, the love that they were shown yesterday and through other times as well. We think of Steve within our own midst and his procedure recently. We pray that it was effective and continues to remain so into the future and that future checkups come back clean. And others that we are aware of or even not aware of in our congregation who may be struggling with such situations, bless them, be with them, Lord. Help them to be in your presence and know your peace in spite of circumstances, in spite of pain. Help the good, good days to be especially good and the bad days to go by quickly. Lord, we ask you to bless our children as we return to Sunday school and the regular order of things on Sunday mornings. Lord, we ask for blessing upon their teachers. Give them wisdom. Give them encouragement in their teaching. Help them to know the work they are doing is producing fruit that they may not see for years. But it is very important to invest into the lives of our young, our young children here in church. Pray for discernment in our hearts and our minds as adults as we interact around the children and we see them in the Sunday service and before and after church. Help us to be encouraging to them. Help us to encourage their good behavior. Help us to direct and guide their good behavior and also not to be afraid to reprimand and correct their bad or inappropriate behavior as they are learning what those things are. Help us to not be afraid to discipline, for it's the loving father, the loving parent, the loving God who disciplines his offspring, who disciplines his children, and help the children to receive that discipline in a manner that allows them to grow, grow in faith, grow in relationship with their families and with their God. Lord, in the silence of our hearts and our minds, we bring to you whatever it is that is burdening them at the moment, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your ever-listening ear and your always open arms ready to receive us when we are ready to submit to your will. All these things we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. You may be seated. And we continue with our hymn, Thanks to God for My Redeemer.
Play with, pray, not play with me, but pray with me, please, as we begin. Father, I ask that you bless our time together as we enter into your word, that it may be fruitful to our existence and provide us living water and the bread of life to which we need. Lord, bless my words. Let them be your words instead of mine. Let my flaws be hidden and taken away and only you be shown through the message you have for us today. Work in us, your Holy Spirit, to understand what you desire for our hearts and minds to know today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I wanted to encourage you a little bit as we've been beginning to read through the Bible, hopefully. And I want to encourage you this way. I want you to know that you have read through, if you're reading with us, you should now be in Job. You should have read through uh, the first parts of Genesis, the creation of the world, and, and uh, quite a bit of history there, the flood, Tower of Babel. And you should know that you've now read through uh, approximately 2,000 years of history. So you've covered a lot of territory. And you've, you've gone a long way. And in the grand scheme of things, it was about 3,900 years ago. So you're about a third of the way through all of human history. So think about that. You've only read for a few days, and you've already covered a, a good chunk of world history. And I, and I won't... I, I don't mean to be discouraging, but yes, it, it's, it's going to get a little slower as we get a lot more details in that history, though, so... But uh, you, you've made a lot of progress. You've covered a lot of territory. And there may be a lot of questions related to that. And so if there are any questions that come out of that, don't hesitate to let me know. And uh, in, this, in this upcoming week's email, I'll include a, a link to an article that covers one of them because it's, it's a question that, that somebody shared with me yesterday. But it is one that commonly comes up when we read the beginning of Genesis. And that's the question of where did Cain get his wife? And it's a question that comes up, and it's a legitimate question to ask. And it's a good question for us to explore. And it, it gives us a lot of insight in a, into understanding who we are as human beings and who God is and, and the history of mankind. And it also helps to inform us related to issues of race. And it helps to remind us that there's only one race, the human race, and that we are all related. And, and not just because half of you are Finks and half of you are Laos, but because we're, we're related, even, even those who are distantly related, we're all still related. If we're not of the family of Adam and Eve, then you're, you, you're either an animal or you're something else. I don't know what, but you wouldn't be a human being. And so there's, there's comfort in that and knowing that. And it, it also clarifies when we see all this fighting in the world and this turmoil or see neighbors hating neighbors. And it's like, you fools. <laughs> You're all family members, and you should love each other as family members. And, uh, and yeah, we don't always get along as family members, but you still should love one another and work through those issues because you're related. Regardless of whether you consider somebody your enemy or your friend, you're still family, and you need to work through that. So that's the, the takeaway from the beginning there, and then you should be in the book of Job, which is such a, an uplifting reminder of suffering in the world, um, but also a reminder that God is in control. And that it also is a reminder in our world where there are preachers who falsely preach to us that if you do good or you do this or that, good things will come your way. And it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. God will bless us, but he doesn't always bless us in the ways that we want or the ways the world expects. And it's not on our merit. It's just the fact that he created us and he has a relationship with us and he desires to bless us just as we desire to bless our children, even if they're not well behaved sometimes or, or in spite of their goodness all the time. So those are the things to be thinking of as you go through Job and it can be very insightful. Um, and then now, so you are about 2,000 years through time, give you perspective of what to look forward to. There's about another 2,000 years as you wrap through Job and you get into, we begin with Abraham at that point, you're only about 2,000 years away from reading about Jesus. And uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you like history, there's a lot of history in the middle of that. And it'll be exciting to go through that. And there's a lot of 
demonstrations of how God worked and, and kept relationship with his people in spite of them. And it's a good reminder to us as well. And we often will sh shame the Israelites for like, oh, how could they do that in spite of knowing God and seeing his miracles firsthand? And we do the same thing ourselves, though. And so let that be a reminder that when we read through that and we see the good, we can see ourselves in the good. And when we read through that and we see the bad and the awful and the sinful, well, we can know that that's us as well and that God didn't give up on them and he doesn't give up on us. So, and then once you get through Jesus, there's not a whole lot more of history unless you go to school. So that'll be the end of our Bible reading when you get to Revelation. So we got that to look forward to a year from now. But I, I pray that you continue in that and that that will begin our, the bulk of our message here now because it relates. Our title today is Grow Strong and Wise. And we have a couple things going on. It begins with uh, verse 40, And the child Jesus grew and became strong, filled with wisdom and the favor or grace of God, which was upon him. And so we hope for all of our children, maybe some of us adults are still in that process, we hope that we are growing. We hope that we are growing in wisdom, that we are filled with wisdom. We hope that we are growing in strength. We hope that we are growing with the grace and favor of God upon us. And that's what Mary and Joseph, they were raising Jesus. They were protecting him as his parents world in a worldly sense. And God was providing for them. And, and it's a relationship between both parents and God. And neither has the full responsibility. But it's a shared responsibility. We can't do it without both. Yeah, parents can raise children, but if they don't have God in that relationship, there's going to be problems. Guarantee it. And parents can maybe just leave their children, abandon their children, do awful things, or neglect their duties as parents and leave it up to God to take care of the kids. And the kids will be provided for by God, by, sub, by other parents perhaps, or other people stepping up. We have a lot of uh, men here who are like fathers to many of the children in this church, grandfathers to them, and that's great. We have a lot of mothers here who are mothers not only to their own children or, or grandmothers to their own children, but to every child in this church. And that's awesome. That's great. But there's nothing that replaces this special relationship that the direct parents of somebody can be. And that's significant. It's a partnership between both. And so, as we continue in number 40, verse 41, now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. That informs us, Luke, Luke here, we, when we read Luke, we're mainly getting the history of the man Jesus, that Jesus existed and he, the things he did and the realities of that historical existence come to us, that he was a man will be clear. And so it really there's, on the surface, there's a, it's easy for us to maybe just kind of read it and just take the facts out of it and maybe not see some of the, the significance of what those facts mean. So his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. So his parents were faithfully re faithful to God. And that's great to know. It's great to see that example. That Mary and Joseph weren't just doing it on, his, on their own. And it wasn't like they had this special relationship where wherever they were, God always sent angels to say, hey, okay, move from here to there. And, you know, we see all that at Christmas. We see the special working in, in Jesus' little life when he was mainly a brand new child and we see God interceding directly with his angels and, and making things clear because it was a unique circumstance and a, and a kind of, if, to be honest, as parents, it would be a very crazy circumstance to go through because God was working miracles and miraculously there. But the reality is later on, they were just normal followers of God like you and I. They would faithfully go to church. They were faithfully going to the, to the temple in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover as commanded at that time to the Jews. They were faithful in their duties to God. They were faithful in their service to him. They had a relationship with God, not merely because their child was Jesus Christ. And so that's a good reminder for us. In verse 42, And when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. 
But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. So a few things here. Jesus is 12. So and they, they went to the big city. They went to Jerusalem. And uh, they lost track of Jesus. And we may think, like, okay, how do you lose your kid, right? But, I mean, how, how many of you have kids who are relatively recently that age or are currently around that age? I think of our confirmation age kids, you know, Braden looking up at me there, right? We could easily go to the city, and if you're with your family as a large group, you know, almost like family reunion, this, was a, this journey to Jerusalem was a big deal for families when they celebrated this feast. And it was a big get-together. It was almost like our annual conference for the AFLC, right? And everybody's there, and you lose track of kids because the kids are off playing or doing whatever, and you, you recognize the fact that, like, if we have a gathering for church, we don't worry about our kids because we know everybody else is watching the kids and keeping an eye on the kids and, and one another, and you just assume that, like, even as Noah and Ezra were wandering around church this morning, and I didn't know where Jackie was, and I know the boys were kind of wandering around in here, but I knew they weren't like wandering around outside or out in the road. I knew they were safe. I knew they were around people that knew them and they were being taken care of. And, and so they, they weren't negligent in their duties. They didn't need to be on him like a hawk. It was especially since he was Jesus. I can't imagine he was going to get into trouble. But he still had a way of, of causing anxiety for his parents, right? Especially moms. It's easy for moms to always feel anxious about their children, always wondering about their safety. It's because it's just the way God has wired women. The dads, on the other hand, it's easy for us to forget because we get focused on a task or something. They're like, oh yeah, I have kids. Oh wait, they should be here helping me. <laughs> but the reality is they both, they did love Jesus. They weren't neglecting him. And uh, Jesus, to, to, not in necessarily a bad way, but he was, a mature young man, and he was going somewhere where it was fine for him to go. He was going to the temple. He was sitting at the feet of the teachers. He was going to the wise, scholarly, godly men. And he wasn't going there to talk back, as that age tends to do, or maybe babble or, or go on and on, as the confirmands sometimes do. Uh, he wasn't seeking the food that the confirmands sometimes seek and enjoy. The Confermans are really great kids, by the way. I, I, I use them because they're, they're just, it's that age, right? But they are a blessing. They are, they are good kids. Pray for them. Continue to pray for them. Pray for me. But uh, that age group, though, I mean, you're, they, they, it's a struggle between wanting to have fun and learn and be obedient, and, and it's a tough age to be. But here you have Jesus the Christ before he was Jesus Christ, before he was dead on the cross, before he was the teacher, he was sitting at the feet of the learned men. In Jewish culture, this was before, before he would have began instruction uh, for his bar mitzvah, before he would have began instruction to become a man. And so he was at the tail end of his kid years and prior to him stepping into adulthood and, and being a man in the culture of the Jews. Very similar to the way we we recognize the confirmation age is kind of the age when you can begin to learn about what your faith is all about and explore it and make it your own. And that's where the picture of what we see with Jesus here. And he's stepping into that role in a way that only he could do. And so they came back looking for him. And after three days, they found him in the temple. He was sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And and all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And so, like I said, he wasn't speaking up. He wasn't talking back. He had respect for the teachers, even though he inherently knew more than they did. <laughs> he was there before they ever existed. He had more authority than they did, but yet he was there. And as he has a tendency to do, when we get to your readings and you start reading through the Gospels, and from many of us have read many of those before, Jesus had a tendency of not dictating things to people, but of asking questions to, to get them to recognize what their problems were or, or where they were deficient to get them to learn. And even now, even at this age of 12, we see him doing that. He listens to what the teachers have to say, and he asks questions and makes you wonder what would those questions have been. And then 
And really, the reality is we see this, this picture of Jesus when he's 12. We see a few pictures of him when he's a baby, in a little bit maybe when he's a toddler age. And that's it. We don't have much other knowledge of what, he, what, what was his childhood like, what was his life like, until later when he becomes a teacher and a leader. And even then, we only get three years of ministry and a very brief glimpse. And so our, our inquiring minds want to know the details. We want to, we want to ask questions as well. But his questions were not just for his information. They were for him to teach as well. And you can see that. His, his questions led to, to their amazement at what he understood at such a young age. His knowledge of God was great and surpassing. It's a reminder when Paul speaks to us later in the, in the letters of the New Testament, and he's speaking to Timothy, and he says, don't let anybody look on you uh, in, a, in a negative way because you are young. It's a reminder that, you know what, even at the age of 12, or even younger sometimes, our kids can ask a question or say, the right, say a certain thing, and it can just cut us to the heart, you know, or... They'll catch us in our sinfulness and they'll expose it when we lie to them or when we, when we say something that's not right or when we show our selfishness and they, they come up to us and they, they have a way of just at the, the right time for God's sake but the wrong time for our sake, right, of exposing the fact that we're not perfect parents and that we're not perfect people. And we, we don't shun them for that. We don't throw them out for that. But we, uh, hopefully we repent before them and before God and we admit, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Noah. I'm sorry, Ezra. I'm sorry, Jacqueline, that I'm not perfect and that I make mistakes, right? And so we almost get to see that a little bit when his parents find him. But yet in, a, in a loving way, they interact with one another. Verse 48, And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. You know, laying the guilt trip on as only a mother can do so, right? Like, how could you do that to me? And then he says, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? There again, he's just asking questions. He's not dictating to her, but he's asking her questions to expose that even though he wasn't with them and he was away from them, he was safe and he was where he needed to be and she needed to be reminded of that, but he didn't do it in a condescending way, but in a gentle reminder as God does often with questions for us. And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and, and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. So they were learning from him as much as he was learning from the teachers and interacting with the teachers. Just as we can learn from our children oftentimes if we humble ourselves and let us do that sometimes. It's not easy. It's not easy to learn from anybody a lot of times because that implies that I don't know it all. And a lot of people can struggle with that. But they just didn't understand. That's all it was. There was just some ignorance there. And ignorance is okay if we recognize it and then work to dispel it. When we don't know something, it's okay, because then we can go on a quest to discover it. If we don't know God, that's all right, because then you have the opportunity to go and learn about God and to seek him out. The problem is when we think we know God and we think we know him better than we do and we neglect that relationship and we neglect that relationship even with other people sometimes. We think we know our wife and we maybe don't spend the time with her that we need to. And we take it for granted over time. Or we think we know our kids. And then the problem with kids is that they never stay the same. It's like, yeah, I know, know, I know Ezra and Noah now. And then five days from now, it's like, oh, now they're in a different stage of life. And their behavior changes and what they can do changes. And so it's a constant thing of having to spend time with them and not take that for granted. And hopefully not years from now regret, regret missed times and opportunities. And so his mother treasured up these things that he taught them. And it's recorded by Luke here. She obviously, this is probably Luke getting this straight from Mary herself later on as he was collecting the history and making notes of this. 
It's probably why it's included, because it was a significant event that she remembered. Memories are important of both the living and the past, those who have gone before us. They can still teach us even when they are gone. Just as Jesus died on the cross, rose again from the dead, and we're waiting his return, but he still teaches and speaks to us through his word. Our final verse, And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. By listening, sitting in their presence, asking them questions. We can learn from that as well. By listening to God, listening to his word as we, as we read it together. If we're all, those of us who are doing that together, we can ask one another, like, oh, if we have questions, we can say, what did you think of that, that of, of Job and all the stuff that's happening to Job? How would you react if suddenly all your family was destroyed and all, all the different things that you own were taken away from you? What would your reaction be? Would it be better or worse than Job's? Would your understanding and relationship with God be affected by that? How would it be affected by that? As you read through the creation and what, what was new to you, what stood out to you, what did you maybe see that you didn't see before? These are questions we can ask one another so that we're not merely just reading it as a task, but so that God can use it to instruct us and teach us. And what's great is as we read God's word, we get the opportunity then also, just as Jesus would do, to share it with others, to teach others, to pass it on, as it's not something to hide in our pocket or to hide in our wallet, our wallets, by the way, which I've changed. I changed to the new one. I still don't like it. I mean, I love it because it's from my wife. But the reality is we need that relationship, right? We need, we need to be able to be in relationship with God so that we can not just always feel like we come to God when we're complaining or needing something, but so that we can sometimes come to God like that and say, and say to God, you're like, hey, God, I'm finally embracing this thing you changed in my life, this new thing you brought my way. Okay, I, get, I, I like it. Okay, I don't really like it yet, but I'm getting used to it. You know, we can laugh with God as well. And, and just, it isn't always as clear in Scripture, partly because of the separation of time and the context isn't always clear to us. But God's Word is always living and active, and He delighted in children. He delights in us, His children of all ages. And it's okay. He, he gave us the ability to laugh and have joy. And he wants us to have that. And he knows the world's going to be full of misery and sorrow. And we, it's okay to have that as well. But don't dwell in that. He desires for all to know him and to love him and to be blessed through that. He desires all to grow in wisdom, which is wisdom is not merely knowing something, but it's, it's acting on it. Wisdom is, is knowing the right thing to do and doing it, or knowing what not to do and not doing it. It's wisdom is knowledge in action. And so you get the knowledge through God, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can understand that knowledge, and you can be wise in knowing when to act and when not to act. You can be wise in knowing when to say something and when not to say something. You can be wise in knowing when to just give a hug and be present, and when to remove yourself from a situation or from a habit. And as you grow in that wisdom and knowledge of God, you can grow in not only stature with God, you can become closer and better known by Him and He'll admire you and, and, and he'll, he'll bless you and delight in knowing you as His child. But you'll also grow in favor and stature of your neighbors out of that relationship. And, and we often get that the other way around as humans. And so don't make that mistake. Seek first God and his, his presence. Ask him questions and listen to him. But if we get it the other way around and we seek to be in favor with God because of the things we do or we seek to be in favor of our neighbors because we do things, whatever they happen to be, that it falls apart because there'll be a moment when you, there'll be a time when you can't do things on your own anymore. And then the people that are around you because of what you did for them, solely because you did things for them, they'll, they'll disappear. And then you lose what you thought you had. But 
if you start with that source and you build the foundation there and, and you draw your energy and your life from the God who gave you life, then you can be a source of life and blessing to others regardless of whether you're doing it every day or not. They'll be drawn to you because they'll see the joy you have. They'll see the hope you have. They'll see the way God is working in your lives in spite of your circumstances. And that'll draw people to you and it'll draw people to God. And that's where you need to kind of step out of the way and let them see God. Just as up here, I hope each week I am more out of the way and you can see God through his word. And through, through the examples of my failings and through the examples of my successes. It's not about me. It's about the one behind me, the one above me, the one all around me. And that is the sign of, of truism. We grow strong and wise on the merits of our God so that we may show Jesus Christ to people so that they may receive that sacrifice and that gift as well. And may this new year be especially a blessing as people get into the Word, as we have greater access to the Word through a gift as well in our church so that there's always a Bible nearby. And if you ever need one, don't hesitate to, to take one or ask for one or to seek one out. It's more available now than it has ever been in all of history, and yet the irony is people read it less now and now, more and more. So I pray that you take that challenge and grow in wisdom this year and in his strength. In Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for this time together. Lord, I ask that you work in the lives that are here before you. I ask as we come before you and communion shortly here that you bless us through that. Give us reassurance of our faith and strength through you, through your sacrifice on the cross. May you bless the body and blood that it might restore our souls and give us a sense of community with you and with one another that binds us together, gives us strength, and makes fertile ground for the wisdom that you have to provide us to take root and to grow beyond anything we can understand. All these things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we continue with Under His Wings.
please rise as you are able as we continue with our service. Dear friends in Christ, in order that you may receive this holy sacrament, sacrament in a worthy manner, you should carefully consider what you must now believe and do. From the words of Christ, this is my body which is given for you, this is my blood which is shed for you for the remission of sins, you should believe that Jesus Christ is present with his body and blood as the words declare. From Christ's words for the remission of sins, you should also believe that Jesus gives to you his body and blood to strengthen your assurance that your sins are forgiven. And finally, you should do as Christ commands you when he says, Take, eat, drink of it, all of you. This do in remembrance of me. If you believe these words of Christ and do as he has commanded, then you have properly examined yourselves and may eat Christ's body and drink his blood in a worthy manner. You should also unite in giving thanks to Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for so great a gift, and should love one another with a pure heart, and thus, with the whole Christian church, have comfort and joy in Christ our Lord. To this end, may God the Father give you his grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue together in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and after giving thanks for it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after he had supped, he took the cup, and after giving thanks for it, he blessed it and gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This cup is my blood shed for you, a new testament in my blood, given for you for the forgiveness of your sins and for many in, the name of, in my name. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Everything is prepared. You may be seated and come forward at the direction of the ushers.
by the risen Lord Jesus Christ, having bestowed upon you his body and his blood, whereby he made full satisfaction for all of your sins, that he strengthened and preserved you in one true faith and the life everlasting. For with his almighty name. Please rise as you are able as we give thanks and praise to our Lord. 
We thank you, almighty and everlasting God, for having refreshed us with these, your gracious gifts. We ask you for your infinite mercy. Strengthen our Christian faith, support us in the trials of life, and make us fervent in our love for you and to our fellow men. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Receive now the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, and may he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his almighty peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessings flow, praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. For good or bad, may the circumstances of the day not hinder your relationship with God as you go forth today. And uh, God bless our Sunday school today and our Sunday school teachers. Amen. Amen.